a, a framework that I learned from the Behavioural Insights team. So who are they? They are colloquially known as the Nudge Unit. They were set up by David Cameron to um, nudge and to use behavioural economics to lead to more pro-social behaviour. And you might have heard of some nudges by them or by other people in TED Talks by the likes of Dan Ariely. For example, if we want to get people to donate their organs, we change the system so it's opt-out rather than opt-in. So things like that. And so what they came up with was an acronym, um, which is EAST, is that if we want to encourage good behaviours, these must be e easy, attractive, social and timely. So let's start with easy. So what's the best way in terms of getting yourself to exercise more? It's to choose something easy and, and convenient and make it the default. Now, that might sound obvious, right? You might think, I didn't need to come to the lecture to think about making something easy. But actually, many people think, well, what should I be doing? Should I be doing um, spinning or body pump or CrossFit or running? And they might look at the website and sort of compare the number of calories burned and so forth. But notice, none of that was in what I spoke about for the last 20 minutes in terms of which is going to burn more calories. If you think about the mental benefits, Anything that will cause you some stress and has some progress will cause those, those benefits that I spoke about. So rather than overanalyzing sort of which out of all of those has the best in terms of calorie burn, what is the most convenient in terms of what's closest to your office or what's closest to work? And um, because of the first bullet point here is the idea of consistency and intensity. So often when we're trying to think about a new exercise regime or a new habit, we think about let's try to make it as intense as possible. I'm going to exercise every day for an hour a day for seven, for seven days a week, or I'm going to practice my new instrument or learn a new language again for an hour a day for the entire every day a week. But that's contrast with consistency, which is what is something that I'm going to be able to maintain. And so here it might be that you're going to choose something which has a slightly lower calorie burn, but because it's close to your office or close to your work, you're going to do it. Or because it's fun, you're going to do it. And that's an important part of easy. Again, um, when I talked about the, 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 the benefits previously, I didn't do a calorie comparison. What matters is that you do something and that gives you all the benefits that, that we mentioned earlier. Also, how do we make it easy? is to add it to our schedule. So people will have things like personal trainers or group exercise classes, and there you would clearly need to put it on your schedule. And once something is in your schedule, you do it, right? We're good at sort of keeping things into your, our schedules, schedule things sort of get prioritized. However, not everybody can afford a personal trainer. Not everybody can afford a group class. So maybe for you, your exercise might be, I'm gonna go and run outside. Or maybe I'm just going to do some stretching at home and so on. But I would say that even if it's an individual workout, you should still add it to your schedule because that makes it easy, right? That is going to block out that time in your calendar and make sure you do it because if you don't, then something else is going to come into that time and is going to crowd that out. It also means that it doesn't, it means that you don't waste time before the workout. So let's say I have programmed, let's say it's 10 a.m. in the morning, and I've programmed, I've put in my schedule, I'm gonna go for a run at 10.30. Now, the time between 10 and 10.30, I'm probably not gonna be wasting time checking social media. Why? I know that I'm gonna go for the run at 10.30, so I need to finish what I'm gonna get, get done beforehand. If instead, I'm gonna think, well, I'm gonna go for my run as soon as I finish this presentation, then it may be that I just take as long as I want to on that presentation. So I take some time and I take a break and just check some email and go back to the presentation. We're scheduling something. One of the benefits of this is not only are you doing the activity, but also in the run up to the activity, you'll be more productive. Why? Because you're going to you know that you've got this um, this thing which is going to break up your schedule. Also linked to this is the idea of just small things um, are going to make a, a, a big difference. For example, let's say just taking the stairs at work. Once you do that once or a couple of times, 
you then become an autopilot. And again, this is something which has a neurological basis, is that when you're doing something for the first few times, this takes a conscious decision from the brain and is difficult. After making something a habit, it just gets imprinted in the basal ganglia of the brain and then it happens just automatically. So again, the, the trick to making something easy is to make it a habit. So even if it is a small thing, if the brain is an autopilot, knowing I'm going to always take the stairs or every Saturday morning I'm going to go to this fitness class, that is something which really does move the needle. And even if it's not the most intense thing, the fact that you're going to be consistent at something easy is going to outweigh that. OK, so the second thing I'm going to talk about is attractive. So choose something fun I've already mentioned, but you can also enhance the attractiveness of a particular exercise regime with some of these um, things here. So one of them is you could add additional rewards during the exercise and importantly, only have those rewards being enjoyed during the exercise activity and not anywhere else. Let me give you an example. That sounded a bit abstract. So one of my former colleagues at Wharton um, called Katie Milkman, she wrote a, a very famous paper called Holding the Hunger Games Hostage at the Gym. Why is it called that? Like, she loved to listen to audiobooks and she hated to go to the gym. So what she did is she kept her audiobook only in her gym locker. So that meant that the only way that she could listen to the audiobook was to go to the gym. And this is something she called temptation bundling. She was bundling something which was tempting to her with also something which was personally sort of costly in terms of um, difficult, which is to go to the gym. And this, when she did a large scale experiment, those who engaged in that, they were actually able to engage in better behavior in terms of exercising more. It might be that you could add additional rewards after um, actually doing the exercise. Uh, for example, you could go choose to go with friends and have a so, say we're going to meet for coffee afterwards. For me, I go to a really like difficult workout called Barry's Boot Camp, where during the hour you're completely beasted by by the coach. What I always have is that in my in my um, locker afterwards, I have a fruit shake which I've made at home with my Nutribullet. Now. I've made that as attractive as possible. It is sitting in my locker and therefore I can have it immediately on my way home. Now you might think, well, why don't I just make it at home when I've got home and, it's, and then it's really fresh, but then it's no longer attractive because I need to put the effort in to making it. Whereas here I know that immediately after I finish the difficult workout, I've got this reward for me. And those rewards are also really important in terms of habit formation. Some of you will know the book, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg, where he talked about, well, how did Febreze get people to, to clean their homes uh, more effectively? Right? There was a great cleaning solution that they had, but even though it got rid of all of the germs, people didn't use it. But it was only when they added a scent afterwards that people started to use the, 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 the cleaning solution why? Because the housekeepers or, or, or the house owners liked the positive smell afterwards because they felt they'd have achieved something. And so to here, just adding a few things can make something more attractive. And all finally, if we think about the idea of focus, remember that was, what was one of the mental benefits. If we are indeed engaging in exercise, then we're focusing on something and that means that then at work we are not getting distracted. But what's key to this? is to, to make sure that we completely focus during exercise. So you might see many people in the gym who between sets are going to be checking their emails. That makes exercise less attractive because it means it's not a break from work because you're on your email. I used to go running in Hyde Park and then as soon as the run was over, rather than enjoying and soaking up the endorphins of the run, I would be just checking my iPhone. Why did I have my iPhone? Because I listen to music when I run. And you might think, well, why do people in the gym check their email? Because they're listening to music as well. But there's an easy solution to this, right? Just buy a portable MP3 player. So what I did is I bought for about £20 um, something which can only play music, and I can't check my um, emails on. And that's what I take to the gym, and that's what I take when I run. And so that means that when I'm doing this, I know that I have an hour of me time where I'm going to be away from text messages and emails, 
And I think that's really powerful. That makes it even more attractive for me. I know that's time, some time that I have to myself. But we have our work, we have our family commitments, we have to clean our house and so forth, and rest is what's left at the end. And if we're really busy, we're not going to rest because there's nothing left. So if this is something which does not get prioritised, it will always be squeezed out because it's the residual. And so it's something we need to prioritise. Um, as a New York Times article stressed, it takes work to stop working. So unless we put this into our schedule, we're not going to do it. So one can think about planning your rest time as deliberately as planning your, your work time. Now, that doesn't mean that rest time needs to be something active. You could plan to sit and read a book or sit in the cafe or sleep during the rest time but make sure that what you're doing is something which is deliberate. And this doesn't mean that you have to always be structured and you can never go with the flow. It could be that your rest time ends up watching TV. But again, to think about when you're, you're doing this, if you're choosing to watch TV, that is a discretionary decision rather than something you're doing by default because you're chain watching after um, several hours of watching something else. So again, what I like to think about is that if I have rest time, is that these are maybe my eight hours on a Sunday, which I've worked the entire week in order to do. Am I using those eight hours as usefully as possible? I said usefully, not productively. I don't need to be doing something active. It could again be just chatting with some friends in the pub. But is this how I want to use my time? And if so, then that's a, then that's a tick. If it's not something not, that's not, I'd like to shake myself out of the inertia. Uh, and similarly, what about eating? Well, I sometimes think it's most efficient to eat when I'm on the tube from a place to another place, sort of eating a sandwich, but just the idea of just sitting down and, and saving every bite. These things might seem small, but this is one of the pleasures of life, eating or listening to music, and these were just relegated to activities I would do simultaneously with everything else. So the message of this is just to be present, to focus on one thing, as a book by Spencer Johnson said, the best present you can give yourself is the present.